top of the hill, which is a mile north of Anderson and a half mile west. My great grandfather was Ezekiel, and my grandfather was William Harlow Craven. And then, then uh, Dad had he was he had well there were eleven in his family, but there were only six that survived, and a lot of them had the same name. And so that made genealogy very hard for anyone that was looking it up. And we lived a mile and a half north of Anderson on the farm, grew up there. Howard went to service from there. And you had four children. Yeah, we have four children. Donna was born while her dad was gone. <laughs> we took her home in a team in a wagon, old fashioned wagon, not a buggy. <laughs> this is Donna. This is Donna. Craig and, and uh, Teresa. Teresa are not here yet. They'll be along, but they're not here yet. I guess that's all. No, I have, four. I have three grandchildren, but none of them are here, and one great-grandchild. This, this is Linda. This is my brother's daughter from from uh, Lake. We're from Storm Lake. Storm Lake. Yeah, we'll do it now, Mom. She'll do it. Somebody else will do it. Okay. I thought she wanted the whole family. No, we do. We just want to go around and we want to learn travel. Okay. Well, uh, I'm Linda and uh, Harlow, and we've been migrating. So we have the Henry Chambers. My dad was William Lee Chambers. They always called him. Lee down here, but in Carroll where he lived, they always called him Bill. And then uh, this is my husband, Carlton Fuller. And uh, Carlton is originally from uh, Marathon, Iowa, which is a town not too far from Stone Lake. So, anyway. Uh, Alright, my name is Eleanor Greider. George McMullen Chambers was my great great grandfather, so Ezekiel would have been my great 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 grandfather. And my great grandfather was also Ezekiel Harlow Chambers. Uh, this is my husband Richard. We live on a farm just outside of Cedar Rapids, about 20 minutes away. We have three sons, and seven grandchildren, and two great grandchildren, so I think there's nine generations total from the first Ezekiel to our great grandsons. And I didn't know any of you people even existed <laughs> until I got an email from this woman named Dan Snyder. <laughs> Who is this person? I was really excited. <laughs> I had all these relatives. I'm Laverna Hart and I'm, that's my husband. And uh, we're from Greeley, Colorado. And Ezekiel is my great, great, great grandfather. And um, Lizzie would be my great, great grandmother. Let's see that. Harlow Mary is my great, great. And you may have heard of Lurie Elvira Rausch. Vera was my grandmother, and my mother was Lori Elizabeth, known as Beth Randall. And uh, we have two boys, Kenneth and Robert, and four grandchildren. So now Aunt Lizzie Vanessa is, are you from that line? Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. I have to keep this straight, you know. <laughs> <laughs> My dad was Don, and his Eileen brother. And uh, I've got my, my family here. I've got three boys. Matthew's my youngest. John is the middle one. And Bill is my oldest son. Bill has his two children here Haley, and then little Braden is uh, about. Three weeks old. Five weeks old. He's the youngest participant. Yeah, he's the youngest. Uh, this is my.
my wife Kay. Can I see And then uh, uh, John's friend Eric as well, also. And we said Bill's wife. Where are you from? Uh, we live in Carroll now. But Bill lives in yeah. Colorado, right? Well, we're right yeah. 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 We're in Colorado. And then do, do the other two boys, where do you live? I live in North Carolina. Oh my gosh. I live in Davenport, Iowa. Oh yeah. I didn't know that. Oh. <laughs> Ten years ago, and my name is Joyce Bott, and I live in Davenport. I actually live out in Pleasant Valley. Um, I and my mother was Ion, who was the oldest of Eileen's uh, siblings and Don's siblings. Um, and then, so Harlow, uh, Harlow, uh, Ezekiel Chambers was my great great grandfather. Uh, this is my daughter, Cynthia DeLachman. I also have to <laughs> uh, You can't do four children. These are Cindy's two little girls. This is Molly. And this is Anna. And, um, and we also uh, so what we think when we pose them by Ezekiel and Garda's uh, uh, tombstones today, that will be the fourth grade. Uh, great, 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 generation uh, was uh, our mother, I own, and then um, Aunt Evie, who just very recently passed away, and then Uncle Ward, and I don't think any of his folks are going to be here today. He had two daughters, what and then Uncle that? Bill, uh, Uncle Bill as we called him, he, he was called Lee by his family, and uh, uh, then Uncle Don, and then Eileen. That was that generation. June died in between Eileen and, but she was a newborn baby. And Joe and I live right outside of Boston. This is my husband, Joe, that handsome guy over there. He gets stopped in every airport because he has a beard. <laughs> <laughs> and we have three daughters and three sons and four grandchildren. And um, we're just tickle pink to be here. <laughs> Come on. You're on. My name is Bob Chambers. Uh, alias Jack. Uh, my father was Jack Chambers. His father was Hansel. His father was William A. Old Billy, they call him. Oh, yeah. Him. Billy yeah. Up the hill. And then so Ezekiel would be my great 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 grandfather. Uh, my wife, Barbara. We live uh, in between Colorado and Iowa. I retired last year. That would be Nebraska. <laughs> just, just checking my DNA. No, no, I'm sorry. Jerry, Jerry and I were no, in our no. Nebraska, Can I get the Nebraska, Colorado football. Hotel? We are I'm a big Buffalo fan, so we got, we had a good conversation. Yeah. Can I do the rest? I retired last year from the computer industry. We have. Uh, no children. We've been married 42 years. 41, going on 42. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
their father was William. Is that William, right? William, A. William A. And then it goes back to the Albert. Isn't that correct? No, Ezekiel. 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 So that's the way I come. I have two sons. One of them lives in Glenwood, and I thought he'd be here this morning. The other one lives just north of Dallas, Texas. And I live in Broomfield, Colorado. So, yay! But, but I, I'm not necessarily anti puff but... <laughs> She's I'm, a big red fan. I'm a big red fan. I've got a little red... I have Colorado license plate on my car, and I've got little red Herbie Husker on the end of my antenna, and I'm afraid to take it to Boulder. <laughs> Cindy's standing here listening to this because she's a graduate of Colorado State. Yeah, so go Rams. <laughs> yeah, watch out. I go Rams. Anyway, I think this is great. And I think we ought to all do something wonderful. Oh, the yeah. The lady who all organized all yeah. this. I just really yeah. appreciate the things that she has done. Miss Danette, I call her Hi. No, it's not Hi anymore. <laughs> anyway, I think it's great. Let's do it again. Now we're the speaker. Who was over there? Jerry. <laughs> I'm Jerry Stricker. I'm from Lincoln. Uh, my wife's over there. Okay. I'm in the construction business. I have two children, and uh, my mom was Lucille. Uh, my grandmother was uh, Nina Patterson, and uh, we're from Harlem. You're bright. He's a great, well, what is he killing? Great, 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 Okay, we're uh, Carol and Steve, uh, the, the kids of Paul Chambers, who is the son of Sam, who is the older brother of uh, Uncle Bill, and, and uh, they, they were the two boys of the six. And I, uh, I live in uh, the Twin Cities, I have four kids. Uh, my wife, Helen, doesn't like to come to Iowa in the summertime because it's too darn hot. <laughs> but I think it's as hot up there right now as it is here. It's 90 up But, uh, and we have uh, six grandkids and number seven on the way. And I'm Carol. We live in Superior, Nebraska. Uh, my husband, Daryl, um, works for the State Patrol and I'm a nurse. Um, our oldest daughter and Daryl will be coming at noontime. Um, we have three girls. Who haven't we got? Who haven't we got you guys? Teresa. Esther and John. Uh, came in. Get, get Teresa. Speaking of the camera. Yeah, tell the camera on all yeah. the Excuse me as I block your view. I'm Esther Powers, and I was Bill Chambers' wife. This is my husband, Don. And we live in well, I'm Steve. I'm Steve. Good to see you. We were worried about you getting to the cemetery. Okay. And we need to get Teresa. Okay. I'm Teresa Glasgow. Okay. I'm Teresa Glasgow, and I'm Eileen and Howard's daughter. Um, and Donna and Larry and Craig are my brothers and sisters. And they're Donna. Give us a grin. <laughs> they belong to those two. And Larry. Larry, we got Larry in there earlier. And Craig's not here yet. And Craig's not, Craig's here, not yet. here yet. He's coming. And I live in Minneapolis, and I work in the newspaper business. In advertising, actually.
was Mary Ripley. Her brother was Uncle Doc Ripley. Now, I know you guys have at least heard that name, Uncle Doc Ripley. This is Uncle Doc's, I think, great-granddaughter. Granddaughter. Granddaughter. This is a Ripley. 97 years old. <laughs> and this is her kid brother, <laughs> Kenneth Ripley, and this is her daughter, Elder's daughter, Jay Davis. Jay Davis. So we got some Ripley blood here, and we got Chambers blood right here in the cemetery. Wow. Good. <laughs> now, and everybody knows the story of how the Chambers Cemetery started. I, I assume you guys know. Why don't you tell, you tell it? Tell it. <laughs> okay. We'll tell you. All right. I think All right. it's so interesting. Ezekiel's house was right over in there. This was a corner of their farm. And Samuel Willard Ripley and his wife lived over on that hill. Ezekiel decided that they he was going to build a sawmill over on the Missouri River. He went to St. Louis. And while he was gone, Gartra and her daughter Caroline were out in the yard making soap, lye soap. Now, does everybody know how to make lye soap? You boil it and you boil it. Okay. You boil it and boil it and boil it, right? And the fire gets real hot. Anyway, they were out there, and you have to watch that real carefully. Or you're boiled over. Yeah. So you just watch that, and that's all you can do. Harlow was out in the field plowing. Sudden spring storm came up, lightning struck the thatch roof of the stable. Horses are in the stable. Now everybody knows how important the horses are. Caroline and Gartra ran into the stable to get the horses out. Caroline got her horse out and Gartra was knocked down by her horse. She had lace trimming on her dress. The horse caught fire and burned very badly. About three days and she died from the infection. Now I'm certain that Doc Ripley was the doctor that attended to her. This was 1857, and modern medicine did everything they could, but you know, infection, I mean, penicillin was still decades away. All right, then the children were wondering what to do with mother. Father's clear down in St. Louis. They didn't know when he was gonna get back. So they buried her right over on the corner of the farm, temporarily because they couldn't get into Sydney because there weren't any bridges. And just to even go down and back and down and back to try to make arrangements, it was just impossible. So they had the funeral and everything here, and she's the first interment for the cemetery. And they thought when Ezekiel got back that he could make up his mind and maybe they could move her into Sydney or whatever. Wasn't Sydney the only cemetery? It was. In the, in it was the, the only the cemetery around. In the county. That's right. Then when Ezekiel got back, and this is just my own little thought, I think he was pretty overcome because his wife was dead. He hightailed it back to Illinois and stayed back there for a while and found a new wife that he knew because they were neighbors. They were neighbors for a long, long time and brought her back here. Then in a few months, Vine Pease was struck by lightning and he died. Well, it was the same situation. Couldn't get into Sydney, right? And the streams and everything. So they came over and said, Ezekiel, could we bury him beside your dear wife? Well, I think that Ezekiel had a big heart and he showed compassion for his neighbors. So they buried Vine Peas here. That was the second one. At his funeral, William Barger attended the funeral and on his way back, slipped on a foot log across Walnut Creek well, the wall Bell the creek, in, you know, is right down here. And it's pretty so. treacherous, and those foot logs and everything. And he drowned, coming home from the funeral. So the Barga family went over to Ezekiel again and said, well, do you think we could bury him here until we can get into Sydney and make arrangements? So that's the story. They already had three graves. Then there is another story about some pioneer people coming through, and their little baby died. They came to Mr. Chambers and said, we don't want to just leave her out on the prairie by herself. Could we, could we bury her here with these other people? And he said, yes. Uh, and things just went along and went along. And then Ezekiel, yeah, they just
just rolled them on, <laughs> and uh, Ezekiel finally decided that he would just donate this portion as a community cemetery. And with the end of time, he said they never charged for a plot. Great, okay. Did everybody hear that? Yeah. They would never be charged for the plot. And that's the uh, reason that the cemetery is here today. In the early days, in the very, very early We have Howard Glasgow, and we've got a lot of the Glasgow kids here today. He was the one that's responsible, and maybe it's Larry or Craig or Teresa. Do you want to say something about the archway? Well, Larry and Chris, where's Larry? Is he, here? he isn't here. Oh, have him tell that story back at the church. Okay, we'll tell that. We'll pick that up. They did anyway, a lot of work. They finally got that so that everybody really knows where it came from. It's important to know that our chambers people, the Ripley's and everybody are here, but it really was a, it's a great story and it, it, was oh, an unselfish, it, was it was an unselfish act for, for Ezekiel to give land. John Bill Faber. Yeah. Uh, many years later, I think. Great. To show up correction. Great. So it's not just a single. All right. Now, was well, it true that Uncle Billy Chambers took over this farm, I think? Yes. After Carlo went on it. Who here is descended from William Billy Chambers? Yeah. I think they took over this farm. And how many acres was it? Was it a 160? Yeah, it was 160. Yeah, so I think they had this land that for many years. I got an old Fremont County plot. plot. Yeah. It shows the farms and the acreages. My grandfather used to live in this house right down here. And he was just a, a young boy when the fire happened. Was he like 11, I think? Wasn't he about 11, roughly? William Chambers. Yeah, Harlow probably 11 or 12. Harlow was already like 20-ish, 21. And George was, where's George? George's people. Yeah, he was like 25 then. I think he was clear gone somewhere, wasn't he? Now, Eleanor, could you mind telling us a little bit about history mirroring or Chambers people doing the exact same thing after I found you? Doing exactly the same thing? What do you mean? <laughs> well, there's a Chambers Cemetery over there. Right, there was a yes. The Chambers Hilltop yes. Yes. that George lived on. Uh, George McMullen Chambers homesteaded uh, southwest of Belle Plaine Island. And he's buried in the Pioneer Chambers Cemetery there. So I don't know whether that was part of his farm and, and he originally gave it or what, that it's named Chambers. They lived in a sod house and uh, they, had, uh, they had just two children.